Nelson. Works his way around Rauche. Out front to Smith. Smith with a shot. And McNacka comes out to challenge. Ooh, now Reader. By McNacka. Reader Even takes a high stick. The shooter. Reader took a high stick from Allison. And he went crashing down to the ice. Allison will get a high sticking minor. We'll get the replay here, though. After McNacka made the stop, Reader went after Allison. He brought his stick right up. And the Tiger captain went crashing down to the ice. Tiger trainer Doug Ball out to attend to the fall of Tiger. That should be here a five-minute one. Brandon, there's lots of blood out the ice. In here front comes of... Allison, right? Gets it in front. And that was... There that you was go. Oh, pretty vicious high stick on Reader. Bingo. And that will no doubt be a five and likely a game misconduct. Reader's a gamer. He's up. face kind of hockey while well, Scott Allison takes on Martin Waugh, takes his lid off and takes a couple of shots in, but Waugh throws the best punch to left and Allison hits the ice and, uh, well, we can't tell you who won that one because he's watching it. Now heads to the corner as Drulia goes to the front of the net. They'll cycle now on the right side. We'll check out the left side, my other right. And, oh boy, nice slash in the general direction of... Mike Donnelly, and I think that was Eric, was it Dubois, or was it Allison who, and now you were right, here we go, Ward and Allison are going to go, and it looked like Allison got the initial right in, and Ward now trying to recollect himself, the fear here for Ed Ward is that he got tagged on that left eye again and may have reopened the cut, and he is very unhappy with Mr. Allison as the linesman may be ill-advised or trying to intervene here. Well, Ed Ward, very upset with Scott Allison. I think he may be thinking that he got suckered to begin the fight. The code of conduct was not followed amongst the big men there by Allison. He didn't square up and say, let's go. He jumped him, gave him that first punch. That's why you saw Ed Ward react the way he did. Allison, along with Ward, will go to the locker room early as 434 remains here in the second. Scott Allison also gets on the score sheet in the second. He forces Pat Neaton into a mild tussle. Not to... touché le disque, le Sean Evans, mais son tir n'a aucune vélocité. Et c'est euh, Stéphane Beauregard qui met un terme. Il y a comme un spot, oui. suite, là. Campo. Campo et euh, euh, Allison. Scott Allison. Sauf que Campo n'a pas a laissé tomber ses gants le dernier. Allison s'est euh, presque rué là, sur Campo après... Le coup de sifflet après l'immobilisation. Et déjà, Mario Robert, je discute avec euh, l'officiel Kevin McGuire. Évidemment, dans les circonstances, on voudrait peut-être que il y ait plus de pénalité ou à tout le moins là que ouais. le geste de Et Scott Allison. Allison soit réprimandé de, de juste Et façon. Campo, la conversation se poursuit jusqu'au banc des pénalités. Denis, petite, euh, petite note puisque le, le temps nous le permet. On y reviendra plus tard. Voilà. Campo qui euh, s'adresse à Allison. Allison tout de suite qui jette les gants. Campo lui a entré con en contact. Il va recevoir une bonne... Euh... <rire> Et euh, Ricardi. Ah, Allison. Euh, Mario Robert, je vais oui. être frappé par derrière. Là, Et là, Campo. la qui est là. Oui, c'était à prévoir. C'était à là, prévoir. Allison qui vient de s'attaquer à Campo. Pendant que Mario Robert, je lui cherche à s'en prendre. À Jensen. Campo lui a gardé ses gants encore une fois. 
Voilà la bagarre éclate. Rick Hardy et Alain Côté, Côté maintenant. Et là, Alain Côté qui a réussi à la toute dernière seconde à renverser Rick Hardy. Et par la suite, eh bien, il y a un certain avantage du côté d'Alain Côté. Qui euh, a Alain, presque... Côté Alain Côté est peut-être l'un des joueurs les plus forts physiquement chez les Rafales de Québec. Mm -hmm. Et là, Côté insiste. Et il y a un juge de ligne là, qui en a, qui en a plein les bras là-bas. Oui. <rire> Ça se traduira sûrement par un 10 minutes de mauvaise conduite et une expulsion. Mm -hmm. C'était euh, en quelque sorte la deuxième bagarre. On revoit. Oui. Là, il y a... Escarmouche avec Mario Robert. Robert Celui-ci impliqué était Riccardi. Riccardi. Riccardi regarde et tout de suite derrière, c'est euh, Allison, Scott Allison qui est venu frapper Mario Robert par derrière et là, c'est mm -hmm. à partie. Geste euh, répréhensible là, de la part de Allison. Mais il faut le dire avec cet écart et la frustration là, qui. Euh... <rire> et là, et là, là c'est jean présente du côté du Mousse. Avec le phénomène une... du programme double de Nice est compris. Oh. C'est la seule indication qu'on peut vous mentionner du côté du jeune. La bagarre, la bagarre oui. Serge Robert et Allison. Ça avait débuté tout à l'heure. Oui. On avait euh, voulu entreprendre quelque chose de ce côté. Avec euh, Robert et Allison toujours au centre. Là. Aucun coup véritablement de portée jusqu'ici. On s'étudie quelque peu. Et par la suite, là, il y a Allison qui a penché régulièrement. Oh, et euh, Serge, Serge Robert, oui. Cible. Encore une fois. Le crochet est là. Euh, Allison en a eu pour son argent. Là. Oui, Allison euh, a sûrement voilà. hâte que les officiels interviennent. Et c'est fait. Alors, euh, je pense qu'unanimement, on doit donner le verdict oui. à Serge Robert. Si Mario a éprouvé des ennuis en début de match, là, Serge vient de rétablir. And the moose can get start, restarted again. We're going to see a hit here as well. Barry Drager gets crunched near the boards behind the net by Scott Allison. They chatted all the way to center ice. And it turned into, well, a bit of a tussle between Chris Jensen and Sean Carter. So Allison wasn't really involved in it, but it started maybe behind play. Got the uh, Orlando Solar Bears thinking about what's going on. Right inside the blue line. Well, it's Allison and Palmer. Allison walked away from it. He was ready to go the first time, but then when he turned his back, Palmer jumped him and he dropped his gloves. Oh, my. And now a sucker punch, and Allison's going to take one for the team there. That's a headbutt. That's a Dennis Rodman, except there's helmets on instead of colored hair. And I think he may have cut himself, did Drew Palmer. He's reaching up, trying to feel for some blood. Now watch this in the lower corner of your screen. Be some sort of a roughing call against him. And, but you're right, nobody has headed over as far as the Griffins are concerned. Now watch this. Palmer has a few words to say for Allison. Allison leans in and uh, well, contributes Allison, his two cents. Well, they were both going in there with the head. I wasn't sure. I thought it was Palmer the head, but it, from that picture, it looked like Allison, Allison was the guy. Yeah. That's why I'm surprised. I will be very surprised if Allison tonight, the Grand Rapids Griffins having sold out 33 of 35, and here we go. Here's Scott Allison immediately engaged, and the guy that he's going with is Dean Sylvester. Both guys trading right hands. Allison landed a couple, goes to the uppercut. Sylvester pops him a couple of times. This is a bona fide hockey fight. Now the linesmen jump in, just as the Kansas City player was starting to get a little bit of an advantage. So Allison goes right away with Sylvester. You get the feeling those two guys have perhaps met some prior date. They certainly singled each other out very quickly if they had no. Orlando Bills go by number 19, Mark Volpe. Assisted by number 16, Tom Richards at 1832. Let's go back to Richards.
throwing any object onto to the ice. With Jim Lynch and the Air Scottish Eagles. Straight away we're into action. Mark Montanari wasn't involved to start off with, but Scotty Allison just found him on the end of a right. Keep your eye on Scotty Allison and Montanari. Montanari wearing 10. Mike Ware's in there as well. He's trying to pull a few players off. In fact, Mike at the moment is like looking for somebody to go and fight, but nobody wants to know. So we'll keep our eyes on Scotty Allison. Another right, another right. And some of those are getting through, and that is hurting Mark Montanari. And I think Sheffield Steelers, Scotty Allison, the winner of that one. He'll be having his naming. through the period here it's two all on the night but still a Sheffield press forward Courtney's got a chance here Bernard Harvey knows where it was but he affected the save and we've got a penalty call here and a punch up well that's Scott Allison and Scotty Campbell of the Bracknell Bees they're going down but this is one of the opportunities where we've seen the players actually throw them Take a little walk to the penalty box. Well, a bit of difference in size, but Scotty Campbell certainly trying to protect the crease area and his goalkeeper. Scott Allison, a great big fella. He's six foot four in stature, 15 stone five, and he's certainly not scared to mix them up. But if you're in my territory, you got to stay out of there. Good job by Scott. Scott Campbell to stick up for his goalkeeper in his own defensive zone. Already in the box, of course, is Tom Gomes. Sending out fresh skaters onto the ice. Rob Wilson, the captain, loses his stick as he tried to pick that up off the boards behind his net. Then Rubichuk goes in and uh, makes a big hit from behind on Allison, and they get all head up and steam about it. And now they go to sort it out face to face. Well, I think Scott Allison not very happy there. A bit of a hit by him behind, perhaps, by Brad Rubichuk. They drop the gloves and go at it. It's not something you see so often anymore, but they're two pretty rough, tough customers, and neither one of them is going to back down. Well, Scott please. Allison, the guy with advantage in size there, Steve, but there's a lot of heart in Brad Rubichuk, and that's one of the reasons why he's such a mainstay. Well, it's, uh, here we are. We can see what happened. Here's a look at him behind the net. There's Allison fighting for the loose puck, and it's the hit into the barrier there. That's what Allison's not happy with. A bit of a hit from behind. Players don't like that one. 
Well, Brad Rubichek more than happy to stand the ground and uh, make his point there. He's the joint joint third with Frank Kovacs, actually, on the list of penalty minutes in the ISL. He's taken 187 penalty minutes in the last two years, and he's going to find himself taking a few more now on this occasion for that roughing. Simon Kirkham just uh, sorting out now exactly what uh, they're going to give. Rob Wilson arguing that call there for the Sheffield Steelers. He feels... It was yet more physical attention for the Steelers as Scott Allison got his elbows a little high on Jarrett Sikiski. Sukuski seemed a little dazed, and that can only explain why he wanted to go centre ice with Scott Allison. We all know there's only ever going to be one winner there. Again, a couple of good early shots. Sukuski takes a beautiful right from Scott Allison. That was his face battered and bruised for the whole game. Jason Weaver was not a happy camper and he decided to take it out on Scott Allison. And after getting a couple of good early blows in on Scott Allison, both of them had a good go at one another. With it being a points victory to Jason Weaver. Both were given coincidental minor penalties to go and calm down. Whilst Weaver and, and Allison were in the box, it was Richard Uniac that stepped forward and with a lovely finish put the Steelers ahead for nothing. As this was going on, Scott Allison stormed out of the penalty box and decided to take matters into his own hand. Scott Allison easily winning the first half of the fight and just as they hit the ice, Weaver got back on top. Scott Allison, not a man that you would like to upset. Scott even gave us a slap shot for a good check from Vanderhorst and an even better check from Allison. Paxton Schulter was not a happy man. He decided he wanted to go with Allison. Unfortunately, Allison had a bad shoulder. He wasn't able to punch very well. So what he did is he went down and made a fine rugby tackle that any England prop would be proud of. Once again, and there is some pushing and shoving going on, Travis Thiessen getting involved there and the linesmen are in quickly to try and sort it out but Shane Dungey is getting into a fight here and is that big Ron Shudra? That's Scott Allison in fact who's really going to Shane Dungey it's Allison and Dungey and I think Scott Allison is having the better of this fight they're down on the ice, that's the moment for the two linesmen to get in. They'll always wait until the two players have tired themselves out or until they fall into the ice before they get involved in case they get hit themselves. And Scott Allison goes off, he'll serve a penalty, but the crowd quite pleased with his performance there. Yeah, that's two big, big boys going at it there. And I think uh, I think it was, a, it was a tale of two halves there, the first half of the fight. Dungey did a, did, a, did a great job and he appeared to have won that fight, but then the, Allison, give him credit, he stuck to his task there and he, uh, he he really did win that fight in the end, but I mean, this was, uh, you know, you got two players, 200 pounds, and those, uh, if anyone thinks that hockey fights are staged, take a look at the impact of some of those fists when they hit, like these are not, uh, 
good slow motion work by the camera crew, but this is, uh, these are two big boys going at it. That's the end of the, f of the second period. There's 44 seconds left to play, but we're actually not going to have any more play here because there's blood on the ice after that fight. Blood on the ice means that we're going to have to get it cleared up. So the referee, Andy Carson, has decided that he's going to call it off for now, play the extra 44 seconds at the start of the third period. Now, the other thing to note as well is that Shane Dungey, and that's his blood, I think, that you will have seen on the ice, may be seriously injured after that fight. Let's hope not, but we'll have to check on that one shortly. Certainly, though, it seems like a sensible decision rather than have a long hold-up at the end of this period and then have to come out for 44 seconds to just tack it on to the third period. Yeah, they'll just play the 44 and then they'll stop to play again and then continue and play the third period. But uh, you can hear the fans cheering loudly for the Steelers. They're getting some uh, good entertainment value from their club tonight. Scott Allison, uh, you know, really got the crowd going, I think, with that fight. And again, uh, Dungey, let's hope he's not hurt badly. I think he's just kind of, he may need a few stitches and uh, didn't look like he would be hurt too badly. But it was, uh, that was a tough, uh, tough bout there. That was better than Hollyfield uh, Lewis, actually. <laughs> Yeah, well, I wonder which way the judges would have given that one. No way to tell, of course. Inside, Makosh again, he shoots! Great save! David Longstaff. Here we got some mess going on now. Smith and Bia! Or is that Allison? Smith and Allison. Allison. Beating Smith a couple of times. Both guys just locking up, locking up. Gonna try and get it free. Smith with a slap to the side of the head. Can't really get a fist going. Allison's a big tough guy. He'll try and throw him down. Two big boys are getting tired and there they go. No punches thrown in that way. Gotta say that's a drop. Not a lot in it, two big guys just hanging on there, dancing around a bit, trying to get loose, but uh, both of them locking in, not giving anybody the opportunity. But again, that just came off the play where another uh, great opportunity for the Sheffield uh, Steelers is about scoring a goal. This time it was McCosh, it was the long staff finding McCosh sneaking in from the point. And just seeing right off the uh, side there where Smith takes uh, Allison, and they say, hey, all right, let's go. Well, Allison with a one, two, three shots in there quick, but then they tied up and it, uh, that was it. So two plus two for roughing for both players. Smith can't keep in, that should do it. There's five seconds now remain, Shane McCosh goes to touch up. To Smith, Knights back to full strength. Couldn't find anybody though, so it's going to be cleared by Bronny. As Allison gets involved with Fushweiler on the boards, and Allison and Bron and Fushweiler are having a little tugging match. And there's going to be a penalty called on Scott Allison as Simpson just rides his man into the boards. That was Perry. And then Allison gives Fushweiler another 
little kick on the boards and Fershweiler and Allison are having words with each other. Allison wants to go and Fershweiler, oh, he's lost his helmet and Scott Allison is just waiting for him to get up. Didn't even throw a punch in anger there, Scott Allison. Just grabbed Fershweiler's helmet and I think that Chris McSorley is not happy as his skilled centerman just gets a, a little bit of physical action from Scott Allison. The crease and now the storm are going to break. Steelers got to get back. Storm breaking quickly as Warren Norris having a little slashing fit with Bullock as Norris and Bullock behind the play are going to turn around. They're going to have words with one another. Warren Norris and Bullock just eyeing one another up on the far side. It's going. Allison and Spring. Spring goes down to the ice. Allison's giving him a good hiding as Spring's going to look to try and get up now. Spring. Well, that seems really pointless. Allison and Spring drop the gloves. Spring dropped to his knees and covered up. As soon as the linesman jumped in, there was Corey Spring, like he was going to knock Scott Allison out. You wonder if he's trying to draw Scott Allison into the extra penalty, perhaps, maybe for being the instigator. Uh, you wonder whether this isn't the fight he really wants to have. But nevertheless, we've been talking about this business with Corey Spring. Seems to be occupying everyone in this game, and that's not good for the game. Uh, it's not good for the team. And now, and now there's talk as Allison went to go there. He was just being Dennis taunted. Dennis Bial's coming across towards Trumbly. Dennis Bial's coming in to get involved. It was Rob Trumbly, so often getting involved where he didn't need to. Referee Simon Kirkham just struggling to keep control for a moment. Adam Smith and Trumbly talking as well. This one, if Simon Kirkham doesn't watch out, is going to lose control as Trumbly's dispatched to the penalty box. But the big thing with Corey Spring here, now if you didn't want to take the fight and you were trying to take the penalty, the linesman didn't jump in. You're taking a big risk of basically getting the hell knocked out of you by somebody like Scott Allison, who's a very accomplished fighter, knows exactly what he's doing when he drops the gloves, and you don't stare him in the face, drop your gloves, and then turtle. Well, maybe, maybe. I mean, maybe we're being harsh on him. Maybe he just, just lost his footing for the second and found himself on his knees and felt that was his only option at that particular point. Let's see what the penalty... <laughs>
52 scoring. All action here at the London Arena. Dennis Maxwell squaring up with Scott Allison. Early right for Maxwell, and now he changes to the left hand. A couple of tough guys here, nose to nose, going at it. Maxwell has a few words of wit during the fight as well. Neither player trying to give an inch. They're both getting shots in there. Maxwell has thrown more punches. Few have connected here and there. These guys have both been there before. Fighting during a game is very tiring. They collapse to the ice. A couple of last punches attempted by Maxwell. Tottman and Norcott, the two linesmen, get in to separate the players. This battle. With the Sheffield Steelers second line really starting to click. It's goals like this that really showed their worth to the Sheffield Steelers organization. With the puck being turned over in the offensive zone, Scott Allison fed Tee to win. Tee to win was unfortunately poke checked by Greg Gatto, but it was win that went to the corner. When he looked up, he used his speed and great stick work to get past two men and fed Scott Allison for the point-blank finish. Seven playoff champions with two goals to the good. Scott Allison's fifth goal in the last six games. Steelers on target for a fourth straight win against the Eagles. Woods, back to Allison. Hoffman's waiting on the blue line. They might try and carry it through the centre with Seaman. Works back for Allison, scores! Pass Campesi, a well-worked move by the Sheffield Steelers. Two on one break. Allison has Seaman if he wants to use him. Allison shoots and scores. Steelers have a four goal lead, three on aggregate. And it looks very much like they will be in the Challenge Cup final now. The Jesters need to score and they need to do it early to raise their spirits and get themselves in the game. Oh, nice pass right up the middle. Backhander upstairs. Oh, number 19. Scott Allison makes it look so easy. How about that pass from Warren Norris? What a play by Warren Norris. Scott Allison, like you said, Paul, he made it look easy. He's tall, he's got the long reach. He's sporting a pretty good looking broken nose there right now. But he steps through with that long stride. Look at the reach on this guy. Dumps the puck on the backhand high into the net. Great pass from Norris, though. Blue line to blue line, and that sends Allison through on the Newcastle net. They're picking some pretty big holes in that defense. Well, a great start for the Steelers, but the worst ever possible start for the Jesters. A minute and 13 seconds gone on this period. And the Steelers are on the scoreboard once again. 4-0 now. Boy, I just lost it. 
AD then, playing it out through his own zone, taking the check for his pains. And Belfast pick it up, trying to keep the early pressure going. That's good defensive work from Sheffield. And they may have a bit of a breakout on here. This is Sebastian with the puck. He's got AD inside him. Why is the shot on Ned instead? Rebounds loose. Norris is in there. Still loose. Here comes Allison. Oh, Allison. Fairy tale for Scott Allison and the Sheffield Steelers. Nightmare for the Belfast Giants. It's level after just 46 seconds. Giants with all the early pressure, but there's Jeff Sebastian, the defenseman, on the breakout. Fires it in high, the rebound comes out, Wilkinson makes a save, but there's the man, Scott Allison. All eyes are looking at him, and his eyes are looking at the back of the net as he puts the Steelers into the lead. But Seth, it's the initial shot from Sebastian that creates all the chaos, isn't it? Yeah, the shot was always rising, and it just came up into the armpit, and there's Scott Allison using his reach just to get there ahead of Wilkinson. So... Two apiece on aggregate, one nil to the Steelers in front of their hometown fans this evening. And all on the first shift as well. Backwards they go now, playing it around in defence. That will give them some real momentum, some real sense of destiny. The first had the early, early play in the first couple of shifts, but now the Steelers have come back into it a little bit. And they look like they're just trying to put any kind of rubber they can on Wilkinson. So a dream start for Sheffield and for Scott Allison, rubbing out the Giants' advantage after less than a minute of play. And the knee there, Sebastian flips it forward for the Sheffield Steelers. That goes under a stick, and Bowen is forced backwards to bounce that off the board. Still in the zone. Here's Norris then for the Sheffield Steelers. Puts it in low. Allison! Allison! To seal it! He does! Oh, Scott Allison, what a game that man has had. Some people think he shouldn't even be out there, but he has really showed what he's made of this evening. Two goals and an assist so far. Well, it could only be what an inspiration he's been to the Steelers. He makes a little move around Wilkinson, and there he is just to flick it home from a couple of inches. He won't score an easier one than that this season. You know what, Colin, you better stick a fork in this one because it's done. Sheffield Steelers giving Belfast an ice hockey lesson on their way to the Challenge Cup final. And there was still plenty of time left to make the Giants feel even smaller. Mike Blaisdell. ...advantage of it now with so many players out there. Shot's going to be passed out to the far side. Beraldo is going to look now, maybe to think back on net. Instead, he's going to exchange pass. Here comes the shot now. Driven in, it's bouncing the back of the net somehow. Scotty Allison is the man celebrating. Chris McSorley is disgusted. Allison is indeed getting the credit. I don't know how it went in the back of the net. However it went in, the Steelers lead it 3-2. to two. Here we see Paul Beraldo. Nice passing between the two players playing defence. Good shot on goal. The deflection must have come off Scott Allison. And by the looks of the Sheffield Steelers fans, they're just happy to be back in this one. And looking at Chris McSorley, well, he's not impressed, is he? Well, Urema's straight back out there to get back on the ice and to do something about it now because he knows, Chris McSorley, that his team is in trouble. And Sheffield, Sheffield are pushing their way towards that Challenge Cup semi-final berth. We get a chance to pause the action here. Paul Borado, he sees the three London Knights set up in a triangle. He's going to look back to the point, though. He's not going to shoot it on goal. The puck comes back very quickly, gets a quick shot off. I think he was looking top corner. And there was Scott Allison to, well, somehow he managed to kick that one in without moving his feet. Which is an achievement. You can't kick the puck into the back of the net, but it can bounce in off you. And that's exactly what happened to Scott Allison there. And that's why the Sheffield Steelers lead this game now by three goals to two. Hardly bear to look. Allison comes in then. It's all or nothing for the Steelers. Allison, backhand side, fires, goal! What a finish and a calm penalty by Scott Allison. And he delights the travelling masses. Chris McSorley, though, on the other bench. He's not too happy as we see the celebrations on one side of the ice. And the home team, Colin Hazelden, well, they'll be disappointed with this one. They will be disappointed, but the Sheffield Steelers came in here knowing what they had to do. They kept it level. It's a fine penalty from Scott Allison. Really, he always goes on the backhand. You think goaltenders will be ready by now. They weren't. Chris McSorley will walk in. The Steelers clear it all the way down the ice. Allison's got it. He's all alone. Allison shoots top corner. Lovely finish by Scott Allison. A great outlet pass. And the Moscow shuts out his broken through big Scotty Allison, the Steelers' top goal scorer. 13 minutes and seven seconds remaining. It's the Steelers one. Dynamo Moscow three. Dumped in. Haddon takes the shot. It's back to Allison. Allison. Goes down low to Clark. Clark back to Allison. Allison, goal. That's Allison's first goal at home all season. His arms are up in the air. The crowd appreciate. Actually.
foreseeable one this week. Nice to be back then, son. Absolutely, it's been great. It's uh, it's been good to be back for Christmas, and it was a uh, was a it was a tough uh, last week, and I was a bit uh, a bit tired today. But uh, you know we got a we got a great club here. I I really like what I see. I like our defense. I think they're you know they're offensive and they move the puck, and that's what you need in this league. And I think Kip Noble had a great game, and it's nice to see a guy get a couple goals that's been struggling. So hopefully that continues the rest of the year. But what's your opinion of tonight's performance, though? Because uh, well, it's good to come back from two down, but uh, you made a lot of mistakes, didn't you, early on? Uh, I think our first period, I mean, we, we had a game last week against Hall or Humberside or whatever they're called now. But um, that probably affected us a little bit. I think we were a little lackadaisical out there, and we made some errors. And uh, we were just lucky Grant Shervin uh, stopped four of the five breakaways, I think, in the first period. And uh, you can thank him for the two points tonight. Can you compare this team to the one you were uh, so uh, ruthlessly left behind just because they were a few bobs short? I, I think it was more, more or less not just a money issue. I think it was just something that I had to try. And I know it's, uh, it's, it's hard when there's, there's money on the line. And it was, uh, there, was, there was a bit more money in Germany. But obviously, I'm back now, and I'm back for less money. So there was something there that, that drew me back. And uh, Dave Sims had a big part to do with that, and Darren Brown, and also Mike Blaisdell. But, uh, I think it was something I had to attempt. Um, there's a lot of money to be made in Germany, and uh, it, was, it was something I had to try. The European hockey is a bit different than the, the English hockey. And uh, if I hadn't have tried it this year or last year, I don't think I ever would have. So I, I, I had that chapter now, and I'm here to play and here to stay. What is it about crowd hockey in life? About crowd <laughs> hockey? <laughs> it's just a different type of hockey. It's uh, like you probably saw in the Continental Cup. It's more of a European thing. And uh, I'll explain this for Bob because it's uh, it's more like English football versus continental football, mm -hmm. where this is attack, 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 and that's to take the puck back, and it's a possession game. And I think uh, I learned a lot over there in my short time there, my five months. And uh, you know, hopefully, I can take that back to uh, to here. And uh, I mean, we I saw exactly what I saw every night in Germany was four guys lining up against the blue line, and uh, what we saw in the first period, we try to carry it through traffic. It's just nothing but trouble. And there's, there's ways to get around that. And uh, you know it's just dumping the puck in and chasing it down. And that's what we've got to get back to tomorrow night. Well, how would you compare this team from the one you left then, in terms of uh, playing ability? Not to slag on anybody, but uh, I think the, the biggest improvement is the depth. Um, I think you've got, you got uh, three solid lines that can play. And uh, one, one guy short of four lines that can play. I think the, the heart and soul of the club, I mean, guys like Tommy Plummer, you know, Matt Hoffman, and myself, and you know, guys, guys down the roster a little bit maybe. It's just so deep. Everybody can play, and if there's one injury, somebody can fill in. And uh, the defense is, is much more mobile and much more offensive than it was ever when I was here in the past. Could somebody else ask a question? It's finally mine. mine too you're just, you, just going to write whatever you want anyways, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Bastard, why don't you fuck off back to Germany? <laughs> have you lost some weight anyway? Have you like sauerkraut or something? <laughs> You yeah, lost. my wife had a baby. I've lost some weight. Of course, she stopped cooking now. But uh, have you lost some weight? I have actually. We we did quite a bit of skating in Germany. Um, the the training was a bit. Uh, I don't know. More just more. You know, two a days on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, riding the bike, and just just basically after every practice, we skated for about 15 minutes. So, I think I'm about uh, about 10 pounds lighter. But uh, I don't find that it suits me. So I'll probably put that weight back on. I'll be in the gym. Trying to get a little bit stronger again. Should have now leave it to you, man. Right? Anybody else? Seth. Okay. Good enough. What's that? Okay. No problem. We'll see you back soon. Good to be back. Really? No. We have very good goaltending. And uh, we have we have some we have some good offensive players with a lot of NHL experience, and uh, much like them, I think they have. A, I think I saw Shalankov. I think their goaltender played in the NHL, so we're going to see two good goaltenders. Trying to get rid of his helmet, Nykov's just grimacing. Those two just fall down, and now Nykov slams him to the ice. 
Canada and Russia have a real history of, uh, you know, really going at it uh, tooth and nail, so to speak, when they play each other internationally. And it's, uh, you know, it's always been a debate whether the Russians are better than the Canadian hockey players. And I think our, because our lineup is, is, is uh, more or less based on Canadian talent, there's going to be that factor, uh, 